hi students this is my second video and regarding states of matter and first video uh, in first video of states of matter i have said i have explained regarding the basic concepts of state of matter and uh, boyle's law and this second video will explain regarding charles law avogadro law gay lussac law and we will even discuss regarding ideal gas equation first coming to the charles law uh, coming to the boyle's law what do you mean by Boyle's law? Pressure is inversely proportional to volume, okay, at constant temperature. Here in Charles' law, what it will say is, for a given mass of gas, volume is directly proportional to temperature at constant pressure. Volume is denoted by the letter V and temperature is denoted by the letter T. Okay, and I think you people know if the temperature is maintained, uh, if the temperature is uh, done in Kelvin scale, it is called absolute temperature. Okay, and here the condition is the pressure is constant. If the pressure is constant, whatever the graphs which are plotted, they are called isobars. Is it clear, everyone? Okay, if the temperature is uh, uh, sorry, if the volume is constant, we'll call it as isocores. If the pressure is constant, we will call it as isobars. Okay. If the temperature is constant, we will call it as isotherms. Okay. And see here, V is proportional to T. So, V1 by V2 equals to T1 by T2. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Now, coming to the uh, graph. Okay. As V is proportional to T. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Whatever the graph which is plotted between V and T, we will get a straight line. And whatever the straight line we are getting, that is called isobar. Why it is called isobar? Because we are maintaining constant pressure. And all these graphs are maintained at constant pressure. So, whatever the graphs which are coming here, those are called isobars. Is it clear? No. Coming to this question. Okay. The graph which is plotted, if we are taking three values, my namely P1, P2 and P3, and if we are plotting the graph between volume and temperature, yes ma'am, which is greater you have to say. Yes, either you will get this one, P1 is greater than P2 is greater than P3, or else you will get this one, P3 is greater than P2 is greater than P1, you have to say now. Yes ma'am, just try to work it out. Yes, coming to my explanation, coming to the solution. Actually, uh, I think you people know this formula y equals to mx plus c. Yes, here we will take the ideal gas equation P, PV equals to nRT. Okay, here in place of y axis, we are taking this volume. So, here we are keeping volume here. V equals to just send this P towards this side. We are getting nRT by P. Okay. Anyway, this C intercept, we didn't get any plus points, so C intercept will be 0 here. Okay, leave this one. So, V equals to, and towards X axis, we have plotted temperature. So, what we can write, NR by P into T. So, it is in the form of Y equals to MX. Yes, sir, no? Here, Y is y, uh, V. Okay, I mean, Y means Y axis towards x axis we have plotted temperature towards x axis yes ma here slope what we are getting slope equals to nr by p yes or no okay we are getting and look at this m and pressure see here m and pressure so m is inversely proportional to pressure yes or no m is in numerator and p is in denominator towards other side so m is proportional to pressure that means if the slope increases what happens to pressure pressure will be decreased yes or no so coming to the p1 p1 the slope is more yes ma'am if the slope is more what happens to the pressure pressure will be less so p1 is less okay then take this p3 p3 the slope is less the pressure will be more so which option is correct this option is correct are you clear with this i'm explaining it i'm explaining it again see y equals to mx plus c if you take this ideal gas equation pv equals to nrt and towards y axis we have plotted v so v equals to just send this p towards this side what you will get nrt by p so v equals to just why we are taking this t separately because t is plotted towards x axis so t separately so y equals to mx okay na m equals to nr by p and take look at this slope and pressure 
this now why we why because we are dealing with pressure here look at the slope and pressure both are inversely proportional yes ma'am so if the slope increases pressure decreases so for p1 the slope is more so the pressure will be less yes is it clear so just try to recall it again what do you mean by charles law charles law is nothing but for a given mass of a gas the pressure is sorry the volume is directly proportional to temperature and this is your third graph we are plotting the graph between log v versus log t see towards log v we are taking log t so v is proportional to temperature v equals to kt so applying log towards both sides log v equals to log kt log v equals to we are separating this logarithm and log k plus log t okay and again it is in the form of y equals to mx plus c okay this one Oops, see this is towards x axis here slope is zero sorry slope is one here okay why because towards x axis we have log t nothing is there my friend so we are taking it as one slope is one here and c intercept we are getting taking log k okay see here slope is one x x axis toward log k y is log v okay now c equals to log k let's try to understand so here we are getting some c intercept is it clear everyone uh, now coming to the Gay-Lussac law okay what this Gay-Lussac law will say now so in Charles law what they said volume is directly proportional to temperature in the Gay-Lussac law they will say the pressure is directly proportional to temperature same as it is done at constant volume okay whatever the graph which are plotted at constant volume we are calling it as isocores is it clear as pressure is temp directly proportional to temperature so what we are writing p1 by p2 equals to t1 by t2 the same cases same graphs we are getting so plot pressure and temperature whatever the graph we are getting that is a straight line so we are calling it as isocores okay and pressure volume same equation p1 p2 and p v1 uh, the, sorry the graph is plotted between pressure and temperature here and we are getting three lines v1 v2 v3 and now you have to say which one is greater now the same equation again p pv equals to nrt towards y axis we have p so write p here p equals to nrt by v okay and towards x axis we have temperature so it is it should be in the form of y equals to mx plus c so pressure equals to what we can write nr by v and t okay and so look at here slope m can be linked to m equals to nr by v yes or no and if you take m minus v okay m is inversely proportional to v yes or no so as the m slope increases the volume decreases for v1 the slope is more okay so v1 will be less so same the same answer you are going to get here v3 greater than v2 greater than v1 is it clear yes now coming to the avogadro what this avogadro law will say under similar conditions of temperature and pressure equal volumes of all gases contain equal number of molecules okay that means it should be a closed vessel closed container okay yes ma'am closed container and whatever the container we are taking it, it will contain equal volumes equal volume means say it is three liters three liters three liters equal volumes of all gases contain equal number of molecules and i think you people know one mole equals to 6.023 into 10 power 23 atoms atoms of molecules are okay now coming to the molar volume clear with the Savagadro law like suppose if you are taking equal volumes let, let, let this be three liters three liters three liters if it is containing one mole okay the same number of molecules here the same number of molecules here okay coming to the molar volume molar volume means the volume which is occupied by one mole okay yes ma one mole of an ideal gas whatever the at standard temperature and pressure volume which is occupied by one mole is always 22.4 liters just remember okay the volume occupied by one mole of an ideal gas it's HTP HTP means standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 liters what is the standard temperature what is the value of the standard temperature ma? that is nothing but 273 Kelvin pressure is one atmosphere okay and what is volume is 22.4 liters see here volume is 22.4 liters temperature is 273 Kelvin 
Okay, clear with this. What do you mean by molar volume? Molar volume is nothing but the volume which is occupied by one mole of an atom. Oh, sorry, one mole of an ideal gas. Okay, at standard temperature and pressure. That is nothing but value is 22.4 liters. Now, coming to the ideal gas equation. And I think you people, let me explain it here. Okay, light it here. Okay. Uh, as per the Boyle's law, you are getting pressure is inversely proportional to volume. This is Boyle's law. And Charles' law, you are getting volume is directly proportional to temperature. And Gay Lussac law, you are going to get pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Yes or no? Okay. So here, shall we write this one as Boyle's law? Pressure is directly sorry. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Yes, ma'am. See here, pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So what we can write? P1, V1 equals to P2, V2. Yes, ma. So here what we can write? V1 by V2 equals to T1 by T2. Yes or no? Or else we can write in this manner, right? Send this one here and send this one there. So V1 by T1 equals to V2 by T2. Yes, ma. From this one we can write it as P1 by T1 equals to P2 by T2. Yes, ma. Now, <laughs> see here. So, just to combine these three equations. This is first equation. This is second equation. This is third equation. Okay. So, what we can write? See here. P1 V1 by T1 equals to P2 V2 by T2. Okay, now see here P1 V1 all uh, denominators pressure as T1 down, volume as T1 down. So we are writing P1 V1 by T1 equals to P2 V2 by T2. That equals to P1. What we can say from this P product of pressure and volume divided by temperature is constant. Okay, so PV by T equals to some K. I mean, in place of K, we are writing it as R. R is nothing but ideal gas constant. So, when we are sending this one, PV equals to RT. As we are talking in terms of, for a given N moles, we can write it as PV equals to NRT. Is it clear? Ma? Yes. See, so, yeah, I am explaining it again. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume here. So, we can write it as P1V1 equals to P2V2. What is this law called? This law is nothing but Boyle's law. Okay. And this pressure is proportional to temperature. This is nothing but what? Which law? This is nothing but Gay-Lussac law. Okay. From this what we can write P1 by T1 equals to P2 by T2. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. This one is nothing but Charles law. Okay. V1 by T1 equals to V2 by T2. Combining all these three equations we are going to get P1 V1 by T1 equals to P2 V2 by T2. That means P1 by P1 V1 by T1 equals to constant. In place of constant we are going to write R. R is nothing but ideal gas constant. Okay. So Huber constant actually we'll call it as so PV equals to RT and for given moles N moles PV equals to NRT and the value of R is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per Kelvin mole or else 2 calories per Kelvin mole or else 8.314 joule per Kelvin mole okay now coming to the problems okay a vessel of 150 ml capacity contains a certain mass of gas at 30 degrees Celsius and 60 600 millimeter pressure. The gas was transferred to a vessel of volume 180 ml. Calculate the pressure of gas at 30 degrees Celsius. So what is V1 here? V1 equals to 150 ml. Okay. And what is temperature here? T1 equals to 30 degrees Celsius. But while writing with this one, we'll write in terms of Kelvin scale. So in order to get Kelvin, we'll add 273, that equals nothing but 303 Kelvin. Is it clear? And what is pressure here? P1 equals to 600 millimeter pressure. Yes, ma'am. Now, coming to V2. V2 is nothing but here 180 ml. Okay. And pressure we need to find out. And the temperature was given 30 degrees Celsius. So, same temperature. So, 30 plus 273 equals to 303 Kelvin. Okay, so we will write this equation P1 V1 by T1 equals to P2 V2 by T2. What is P1 here? 600. Volume V1 is 150 by T1 303. 
equal to what is P2 here we need to find out V2 is 180 by 303 so 303 303 gets cancelled here okay so what you will get this 0 and this 0 gets cancelled okay 36 okay this is 200 times 3 twos, 3 fives okay 100 so what you are getting P2 equals to 500 millimeter mm of Hg is that clear everyone okay now coming to second question oxygen is present in 1 1 liter flask at a pressure of 7.6 into 10 power minus 10 mm of Hg calculate the number of molecules at 0 degrees Celsius so what is volume which was given here V1 equals to 1 liter pressure equals to 7.6 into 10 power minus 10 mm of Hg okay just try to understand here as the volume is given in liters it should be in atmosphere so we can we'll write we'll divide it in terms of with 760 mm of Hg so we are going to get uh, how much you are going to get this 7.6 7.6 get cancelled so we are going to get 10 power minus 12 okay calculate the number of molecules at 0 degrees Celsius volume was given so PV equals to NRT pressure is given pressure we are going to get as 10 power minus 12 volume is 1 liter and N N is weight by gram molecular weight right sorry N we need we will find out R R at is it is in atmosphere ok we will write it as 0 0.0821 temperature 0 degree celsius means 273 ok na N we are going to get n equals to 10 power minus 12 by 0 0.0821 into 273 you will get this n means number of moles so no ok na number of molecules means 1 mole equals to 6 6.023 uh, 6 10 power 23 act molecules ok here how many moles you are going to get that much into 6 into 10 power 23 is it clear now everyone oh. coming to the third one problem 340.5 ml of phosphorus volume was given that equals to 340.5 ml of phosphorus that is weighing what is weight here which was given 0.0625 grams okay temperature was given 546 degrees celsius that equals you need to convert it into kelvin scale right so how much you are getting 819 kelvin okay and pressure equals to 0.1 bar okay na? As it was given in bar, which convert it into liters. So just multiply divide it by thousand liters. Okay. Now you need to find out what is the molar mass of phosphorus. Apply this equation again. PV equals to NRT. Pressure is 0 0.1 into volume is 340.5 divided by thousand in equals to N molar mass means N you need to find out R as it is given in liter okay bar you can go with this value 0.0821 okay na and temperature you need to find out temperature is 819 0.0821 okay na so n equals to what you are going to get 0 0.1 into 340.5 divided by 1000 into 0 0.0821 into 819 if you multiply this one you are going to get the polar mass of phosphorus yes ma'am is it clear now ok and that's all for today and let me revise it once Charles law Charles law means volume is proportional to temperature Gay-Lussac means pressure is proportional to temperature ok molar volume means the volume which is occupied by 1 mole of an gas at HTP that is nothing but 22.4 liters ok uh, what is the ideal gas equation here PV equals to NRT where P stands for pressure V stands for volume N means number of moles ok R is R is a constant ok and T means temperature and the temperature which is measured in uh, Kelvin scale is nothing but absolute temperature ok R is universal gas constant or else we will call it as ideal gas constant ok na no? simply we will call it as universal constant ok yes ma that's all for today
thank you thank you for watching if you like this video please share and subscribe to my channel bye